Hey, konnichiwa minasan, it's Grey from Akazashi's Tea House over in Japan. How are you doing? Are you good? Are you feeling genki? Okay, here we go. It's the launch of Ghost Machine, officially. Um, the three issues come out today. I'm going to review the first one. It's Rook, Exodus, issue one. Written by Jeff Johns with fantastically detailed art by Jason Fabok or Fabok, Facebook, never mind. Um, colours by Brad Anderson and letters by Rob Lee. So, what you want to know is, is this issue any good? Is it worth picking up? Is it worth spending your hard-earned money on? Well, for one, listen to this. $3.99 gets you 48 pages of story. Gorgeous detailed art. 48 pages. It's a bumper issue. So yeah, I would go without a doubt. I'd pick this up. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be picking this up because it's a, you know a number one. It's a launch of a new, hopefully long-running series. So what you want to know is how's the story? Well, I've already said the art is excellent, and you can tell. I'll give a story summary where I'll show just some of the story. I don't, you know, usually I show a little bit, well, quite a bit of it, but this time I want it to remain, you know, a real surprise and enjoyment for you reading. So, yeah, I'm just going to show a little bit from inside. But the story is interesting. It's got me hooked. It's got me intrigued. It's, of course, a sci-fi setting. We've got a, a kind of battle between nature and technology. We've got these weird ideas, these helmets that can control certain species of animal. Um, the theory was that the people who populated this this um, new planet or this, what do you call it, um, terraformed planet, they were going to control the animals to make the animals work for them, you know, have a kind of symbiosis with the animals on the planet. But hey, best laid plans and all that, you know what often happens there. So yeah, intriguing opening story. We get flashes of uh, Rook, the character's um, past life what led him to this planet, how he got there, what he used to do on Earth, what went wrong, you know, what caused people to leave Earth, exodus of the title. But now things are going wrong on um, exodus itself. So there's an exodus from exodus. Couldn't resist it, I had to say that. So yeah, this is a solid recommend. Um, I'll give my score at the end as usual and I'll show you the variant covers. But first of all, here's a story summary. So please keep watching and here we go. Okay, here's the introduction from the title page, Rook Exodus. A struggling farmer from Earth was given a second chance on the planet Exodus, a terraformed world where every aspect of nature is controlled by humanity, including the winged scavengers who plagued his crops. Now called Rook, the farmer became one of the wardens, those who wear helmets capable of commanding an animal species. But when the world's engine failed, the power of the Wardens fell into the wrong hands. Those who could afford to fled, forcing those left behind to choose between trying to escape this war-torn world before its destruction, or fighting to save it. Jeff Johns, Jason Fabok, with Brad Anderson's on colours, Robley on letters. We open with a full page of a planet, the Kepler system, Planet F, purchased by Better World, TM, 2152. Rebranded Exodus 2153, colonized 2159. Then we have the Earth engine failure in 2170, only 11 years after it was colonized. Evacuation 2171. We open in the year 2173, and we get quite a bit of narration, a bit of setup here. The world engine failed, but no one seems to know why. The people who could afford it, they bought a ticket off there as soon as possible. As the last ship of the paying population boarded, the corporation said they'd come back for us, the hired help. Yeah, right. That was two years ago, and there's been no sign of anyone. No communication. Nothing flying down from the sky. Only things flying up. Then we're told that most of the people remaining there, they choose flight. They want to get off this planet. But most of them aren't rocket scientists. As we see one of the ships explode on takeoff. Then we get a view through Rook's binoculars. He's saying that he needs parts. He scavenges the crash sites for parts to put together his own way of escape, or maybe to power where he lives. Back on Earth, we're told, he was the last of a long line of farmers. Then we get this great single-page image of Rook with his helmet on. What do you think? I love this detail. Jason Fabok on the art there. The crows or the ravens or rooks surrounding him. Okay, here's an example of one of the pages where you can see the full-page art. Great attention to detail by Jason Fabok. I also like the limited colour palette. Here, Rook's calling one of the other wardens, one of the only ones he can trust, so he says, About time, swine. I'm at a recovery. I need you here. 
But Swine tells him he's way out of range. He's on his own. There's a survivor from the crashed ship, but it does not like he's going to be surviving for long. Time is running out for all of us. Then let me skip ahead a few pages to this fantastic scene. There's a huge bear attack on Rook. I thought it was some kind of kaiju to begin with, some kind of crazy giant monster from that planet, but we're told later on that something about the planet has accelerated the growth of the creatures, the creatures they brought from Earth. So this used to be a regular brown bear. Look at the size of that thing. Rook's trying to fight the bear by himself, but here we see he uses some kind of control in his helmet to make a connection with the birds. The birds join the fight. Then again, just have a look at the detail here in the art. I've blown up the first panel, the top panel from this page. Just awesome detail. And I like the onomatopoeia as well, the lettering. Okay, again, just let me skip ahead a few pages to give you some of this awesome world-building detail. Look at the art by Jason Fabok here. Let me blow it up a little bit. Just gorgeous attention to detail. You can see they've put a lot of care and time into this opening issue. And there's a bit more from the same page at the bottom. Look at that. Okay, let me skip ahead again and we get this one page here where we see details of Rook's everyday life, how he's surviving, catching fish and cooking fish, eating cans of beans. We get a look at his face and skip ahead once more. We get this scene here where he's out in the, the wasteland. We're told that there was water here three days ago. He's getting hungry and so are the birds. The only loyalty they have is to the helmet. But even that doesn't stop them from starting to circle. Okay, just let me show one more page. There's another character here we're introduced to. Swine. Look at him. You can see what kind of animals he's controlling. He's controlling wild boars there. Look at the size of them. Again, great detail and pencils and inks and the colours, the limited palette. Love the atmosphere, love this world building. There's still over 20 pages of story to go. There's, it's a massive book, this. It's a bumper-sized issue, but I'm going to stop the story summary here. So, here we go. Hope you enjoyed that. For a score, now, for the amount of care, the level of uh, love and attention to detail of this issue, the quality of it, um, you know, it's not the most amazing story, but it's got me hooked, got me intrigued. I'm going to give this a very generous, I think, 9 out of 10. Okay, let's check the variant covers. The first one here is by Ivan Rice. Ivan Rice, Ivan Rice. Really good detail here. You can see some of the characters and some other characters of the Ghost Machine universe popping up on there. Good to see Junkyard Joe. Hey! And here we have a Jason Fabok 1 in 100 variant. Just the main character and his awesome... Uh, what, deadly, what is it, Hot Wheels? I don't know what to say then. Kind of losing my mind again. A um, bit of a G.I. Joe vehicle going on there. Maybe not. But yeah, I like this. I like the, the detail on the character and the rook, the weird bird below. Look at the size of that bird. There's also a blank, blank cover variant, but there's one more and I think this is going to be very hard to get. A black and white version of the main cover. It's a 1 in 500 variant. Think about that. The store's got to buy 500 copies to get one of these, but gorgeous to see just his black and white inks on display there. So yeah, that's it for the uh, variant covers, the, the score. I hope you enjoyed my review. Um, I'm going to try, try if I can, to review the other two issue ones from Ghost Machine, see if we can do that. But thanks so much for your input. Thanks for your voting on the, the poll I put up earlier today. And yeah, I hope to see you in another review and another video. This has been Grey from Wakazashi's Tea House. Shout out to the members of the Wakazashi Tea House Dojo. Us! Saying matane. Yeah. I see, Nate. You're fond of me, lobster. <laughs> <laughs>